Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the uh, Content Creator Evolved panel. I'm joined by some of the latest and greatest Halo content creators and just creators in general from around the Halo scene. So I thought, let's sit down, let's talk about content creation within the Halo world and just kind of, you know, kind of get inside the minds of content creators to see what they think of it. So I'm going to start, let everyone kind of introduce themselves. I'll go first. I am Nick or Ubernick. I am a YouTuber and Twitch streamer. I've been making Halo content for eight years now. So good chunk of my life, and it's something I really enjoy, obviously. Uh, Luke, you want to you wanna take over? Yeah, uh, I'm Luke, or Hidden Xperia. Um, been making Halo content for like 12 plus years now. Um, been playing Halo, well, actually we'll get to that later, but uh, yeah, I make kind of like anything Halo really, like lore, reviews, news videos, game, literally anything at this point, I'll make, I'll make anything really. Hi everybody, I am Aliak. I've been streaming on Twitch for about five years now. I am kind of a variety content creator, but I've played Halo for so many years. I, I was just dying to play Halo Infinite, and this, these last two years I just started to introduce Halo into my community to teach them what Halo is. Um, and it's been, it's been quite amazing. So I'm a Twitch streamer and I do uh, YouTube as well. I'm Alex. I go by Infinite Forges. I've been doing Halo content creation for a couple years, few years now. Is it, it feels really fast. But anyway, uh, I focus on Forge content, as many of you know, and then I also focus on Unreal Engine. Creating immersive experiences is kind of just what I love to do. And yeah, that's me. Nice. OK, I don't think I could have got a better group of people up here. Everyone has a very different background. We all make very different kinds of content. So that's kind of the whole idea. I wanted to cover a whole variety of Halo content. You know, maybe someone watching or someone in the crowd here wants to get into Halo content in a certain niche. Hopefully, one of us will cover that because there's such a wide range of us up here. So, Mr. Forges, Alex, I'll start off with you. Yep. Okay. What got you into creating Halo content in the first place? It's in my name, Forge. Okay, okay yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I, I just, I, I've been playing Halo for so, so, so many years. And Halo 3 was when I really started messing around with this little tool. It was quite frustrating looking back at it now, but the thing is it was great. It sparked creativity, it was a lot of fun. And then from there, now to see where we're at, right, with this upcoming Forge is kind of insane. Especially with working in Unreal, it's quite inspiring. So um, that's what got me into it. I think it's the best route I could have ever took because this is something I truly enjoy, and I wouldn't ask for anything else, honestly. It's really cool. Yeah, like whenever I watch your stuff, it makes me be like, huh. Like, I don't think I could do that, but I really wish I could do that because it looks I, so you, cool. You said that on stream once. Yeah, you, I think um, you're messing with the Zeta Halo experience. I would want and you're nothing like, more. People like this annoy me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want like, nothing sorry. more than to be a good forger, but I'm like, I put a block down in the map, and I'm like, all right, that's my creativity over, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's so, complex. I don't know how I do it. Yeah, but. Alec, so how about you? What got you into Halo content at all then? I've been waiting for Halo Infinite for a long time. <laughs> I think it, as soon as I started making content, I knew that at one point I was going to be making Halo content. Yeah. I was just waiting for the right moment myself and enjoying other first-person shooters that I've always loved to play also. Um, so I knew that I naturally was going to get to this point. And actually, one of my first streams ever was Halo 5. I literally bought an Xbox and played Halo 5 for like a few days, and I started streaming. Um, I obviously didn't have the specs to, to do it, but uh, that's when I knew that eventually I was going to be here creating content. Plus, I've been playing Halo for so long, I just wanted to build a community that could play Forge games and Jenga <laughs> and all those really fun games that I experienced when yeah. I was playing Halo 3. I just wanted to build something with that. That's a content you should do. Take like a noob forger like me or someone and then teach them the basics. Dude, we could make a video about that. I'm so done like, I'm teaching that. Uber Nick how to use I am Forge. so done. I can That'd go from fun. placing a block to a wall or something. So I think that would be fun. It only takes like 10 hours. It's fine. We could do like a basic block out. Yeah. And then be from there, fun. we can make it a series. Yeah. We can make a series where my map goes from basic to in matchmaking. So <laughs> maybe an Uber forger. That's what it'll be. Yeah. I thought I was good at Forge. All right, Luke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I've been playing Halo since I was five years old, and I always knew from the get-go, pretty much from the first hour of playing Halo 1 in like 2002, I knew that in some capacity I was going to work with Halo, 
like back in the day, I was when like first few years of school, I always used to say like, oh, I'm gonna work for, as I used to pronounce it, Bungie, because I was like seven years old and didn't know how to pronounce it. Um, but then like I started seeing like videos popping up on YouTube and Google videos back in the day, of uh, people like making things in Halo, and I was like, hang on, I want to try this out. Uh, and I'd actually already made like some like RuneScape YouTube videos before that, so I was kind of used to making it. So I started making some videos about Halo, in particular of HLG, so like getting in the, the, the lead in the game and then hiding. I really enjoyed making them, uh, and then I kind of just, it kind of just went from there. Really, like I kept going with it. Um, I got really addicted to making videos, and here we are, like twelve years later. Here we are. Flood is all you can think about still to this it's day. Always on the brain, twenty-four-seven, <laughs> even when I'm sleeping, for better or worse. All right, so I want to move on a little bit. So now we know, like, how you got into it. I like for you, like, what is the hardest part about? creating content, not even just Halo, but just creating content in general. The hardest part about creating content is figuring out what content is, especially when you're starting out and people tell you the content is like what you're supposed to be doing, but you're just playing games and you're figuring that out. Like what actually is content? What do people really want to watch? And figuring out that out while you're, you know, also playing games. I, learning to identify that is one of the first, one of the hardest things to do when you're starting out. and. Content creation is a roller coaster. You go through so many ups and downs, and it's about learning to identify. It's just a down moment. There's going to be a next high in a yeah, little bit, and, and uh, learning to deal with that. Yeah, I find I I really really resonate with that because mm -hmm. like you can have a really good week, you, know, you yeah. feel really good about the content you make, then the next week is just an absolute crash, and yeah. you feel like you, know, you almost feel like oh everything's done, it's over for me, and then the next week is fine again. It's just up and down constantly. So Luke, what about you? What do you think the hardest part is? I think, yeah, like the peaks and troughs that you go through, like you can upload one video that does insanely well for whatever reason, and then you can upload another video that you think is gonna do really well. Like you're like pretty adamant when you're making it and uploading it that it's gonna do really well, and all of a sudden it just does awful. Like the kind of like inconsistency of it doesn't help. I also find as well that actually thinking of video ideas is the hardest part for me. As soon as I've got a video idea written down, I'm good to go. Like I can be really productive with it. I can just like get it done, get it done to like a quality bar that I'm happy with. But actually coming up with the ideas for me is the hardest thing sometimes, which is why like I actually sometimes dedicate an entire day to not editing or anything, just trying to think of ideas. Like I'll get out of my like natural like work environment and I'll like go for a walk or something and try and like open my mind up and then try and think of ideas like that. Um, and that helps a lot because I feel like when I've got a lot of like a list of videos I want to make, I can be just purely productive with no breaks. Whereas actually w when I get to a point when I need to make a video, but I haven't got any ideas, I just sit there staring at a wall like, okay, right, what do I do now? <laughs> what do I do? You're like, work, work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like uh, so for me, me, oh, go ahead. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, you, you, you go ahead, you go ahead. Oh, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, I think one of the, going from your you know creativity i feel like sometimes people don't like expect the business side of content creation to interfere with your creativity so much yeah. you have two how many jobs do you have when you're a content creator social media you do content creation you're a video editor yeah, you're being a content creator is not <laughs> just sit down and play a game it's sit down and think okay how do i grow this how do i mm -hmm. do everything the best of my ability it's so much more than just like sitting down yeah. and being like, hey, I'm super fun today. Yeah, you know? exactly. When I was at school, people used to say like, oh, you just want to sit there and play games for a living. Like, dude, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Were it so easy? Yeah, it's, it's almost like playing games is like the least part of being a content 100%. creator. You know, well, obviously, if you're like a Twitch streamer, it's a little bit different. So for me, I, I more so focus uh, my efforts as a Twitch streamer nowadays. And like, I love it. It's an absolutely fantastic. But there's days where you simply just don't want to be on camera. You know, you just don't want to be entertaining in front of people. And you're like, well, I mean, if I don't get on, I'm, I'm not working. I'm not, you know, I'm not progressing in any way. Something that I've noticed, because I don't stream much. And the reason for that is because people don't realize how mentally draining streaming is. Like, I have so much respect for people that stream daily, like every other day, multiple times a week for like hours and then because it, I, when I get done with the stream, I just want to go and pass out. I want to go to bed and just lie there for like 15 hours. Like yeah, it's, it's like a mental workout. Your it, brain is just ticking over for it, hours and hours and hours. It is 
insane. Like, I have so much respect for streamers. I, Dude, I couldn't it, do it all the time. It, it, it. I have respect for YouTubers. I don't know how you guys... I mean, I tried doing YouTube, but I feel like doing to both of those platforms at the same time is insane. And people who are able to do it are just extremely talented. And also, some of them have been able to get help to, to do that. Yeah. Um, so... You're amazing. Alex, so you. I, I, I see you two, right? Nick and yourself. It's like, I stream Forge. And at the end of it, I'm like, I got to pass out. I'm done. <laughs> I can't even keep up with the comment sections. I have people always telling me, they're like, uh, I wrote that like 10 comments ago. I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Alex, I'm really, I'm interested in your answer because your content is vastly different from anyone else's up here right, because right, right. yours is a purely creative process you yeah. know everyone's creative in, in their own way but you're literally creating something for other people to experience right. in you know a, like a physical but in the video game like how do you how, what's the process like for you being like okay i want to forge this i think this is a good use of my time like well i mean a, a lot of starting anything is just taking the time to like you said you sit with yourself you listen to yourself or whatever you're feeling i look at a lot of concept art art station is like my number one go to i just constantly go through a bunch of pieces like the cyberpunk level that i did in the leaked ford version um, that was built in 4 hours and that was just stream of consciousness type of like right um, so i there's no real way of me being able to say like this is how i do it every single time it's really it could be sporadic right but I think the hardest part of that content creation is that when you do something that's cool, you put it out there, people love it, you want to one-up yourself, right? You want to do something that's cooler or better or just more well-refined. And that, to me, is the most mentally draining aspect, not in a negative sense, but it's just that takes so much energy to, to, to do that. Yeah. And it's I like a, it's expectations that you put on yourself, but I mean, that's just... That's just how it is. Yeah, so, I, I think yeah. the other side of like the worst part of a content creation is after you've made a piece of content that you're proud of and it doesn't perform as well as you hoped it would, it's like almost kind of crushing. It's always the stuff that you work the hardest on as well yeah. that does the worst. And then it's the stuff that you're kind of like, ah, oh, throw it out there, it does just fine. I spent 10 hours on a map, right? And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> I put it out there and no one enjoyed it. And I was like, wow, <laughs> this sucks. Like, you did? Was, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it, which, which is the great part about it. I get my creative release. But when you put it out there and you have so much pride for it, it's just one of those things that's part of the game. You have some wins, you have some losses, and that's just that. Yeah. So, in, with YouTube at this point, it's almost a running joke that the videos that you put the most time and effort into yeah. do the worst, and the videos that you put the least time and effort into always do the best. Like, I put it's up a, almost a running joke at this point. I put up a 45 second video of some Forge video that I shared from Twitter, and it blew up. Yeah. And I'm like, this is very strange. Well, do we, I, I look at your Forge stuff that you're putting out there, and it's like going crazy. So, you know, people are obviously. Just wait till these guys get started. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, I'm going to flip the question now. Going from what is the hardest part to what is the most rewarding part about being a content creator? Luke, you want to lead this one? Honestly, it sounds cliche, but the comments, like, I honestly do sit there when I've loaded a video. Like, after it's been out for like three or four hours, and I'll sit there and I will literally read every comment. And seeing all the positive comments, people saying, like, oh, like, Love the video, like really enjoy the video, like watch this on the way to work or school or whatever. Like it's just always so rewarding seeing that because like you just put so much. I, I almost become in a way like detached from my videos when I make them. So I spend so long making them that like I don't see them as videos anymore. I see them as like projects. So like when I upload them and I see people enjoying them as videos that they watch to keep themselves like entertained, it kind of brings me back down to earth and it's like, oh yeah, that's why I do it. Like seeing people being so happy about it, seeing people say that like, oh like. It like made my day or like helped me through like a rough time or something. It's, it's always really great hearing that. There's something that I enjoyed making can actually help someone. Uh, is it's always great. Yeah. So like, when it, like now that I'm more of a Twitch streamer, it's uh, you know I was you know I, I'm still a YouTuber, but I would love reading comments. But something about Twitch is so different because you get a whole different kind of aspect to putting in the long hours because you kind of grow a community on your Twitch that are there in like real time. So I'm looking at the crowd. I see so many people that like watch my stream, which is like the coolest thing ever. You know what I mean? And it's like the sense of like growing a community of people that, you know, not only like just watch you, but become friends with each other and start like actually caring about each other. 
it's extremely rewarding for me to like see, you know, kind of like your own community become more than just a Boiju. It's, you know, they're there for each other, which is to me like super wholesome and it's very, very rewarding to kind of see that come together. So I agree. I definitely agree with that. I think I, I got into content creation because I love entertaining. I've always wanted to make a positive impact on people and see people laugh or maybe cry if I'm acting or something. Um, but I, I feel like when I impact people through content and I, I, I see people be, be able to meet each other, I make groups and, and become friends um, and seeing chat's reaction to like really awesome moments on stream and then when you get to come to these events and these people come to you and say like, hey, I love watching your streams and I, you make my day when I'm, I'm at work and it's, it gets tough and, and I get to hang out with the community and it just makes everything so much better. To me, that means the world to me that I'm able to do an impact like that on so many lives that are you know yeah. watching on and Twitch. that's the crazy thing about events you know you put a face to someone's name that you've seen mm -hmm. online for potentially years you know what i mean you're like oh you're, you're actually a person you know you kind of forget because you just see their old comments all the time so getting to actually meet people that have watched your content to me that's like absolutely the number one it makes it, it real it is, it is surreal <laughs> it is always very very surreal alex what would you Say events like this, like you said, meeting people. It's probably one of the like these guys right here. Like it was awesome meeting them for the first time. I mean, I never showed my face, so <laughs> you know I'm walking around saying, "Hey, I'm Alex." They're like, who are you? And I'm like, "Infinite." They're like, "Oh, you know, <laughs> yeah." It's been cool. It's been a lot of fun. But um, I think the most rewarding, the most fulfilling aspect of what I s specifically do with content creation is the comments that you read from people. Like there's a lot of people that follow me that want to be artists, that want to get into the game industry, that want to just create for fun. And to know that I am creating stuff that's inspiring people to continue to create stuff is beyond anything I could ever create. It's beyond any exposure of, on any platform that I could ever get. It's beyond all of that. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. It's, it's, it's nice to know that what you do ripples into other people's lives. For you it's as nice. well, it must be really fun to see like a map that you spend hours and hours upon, and then it's out there and people are playing on it and just creating like their own fun Halo memories on a map. Like when you guys make videos and I see your reactions, like when you first did the video on the, the Zeta Halo, um, his l face lit up and I was like, this is so yeah. <laughs> cool. That's become so, like one of my favorite things to do right yeah. now is uh, yeah. looking up like Halo Infinite Forge stuff that people have made and just like scrolling through because it is so interesting to me to see what people have made. So, you know, I can only imagine them seeing like other people just react to their stuff and being excited about it is a very like exciting thing. The, the fact that we have a, a file share as well, you're going to be able to see how many times people have played it, yeah. right? And that's really rewarding as well because you know that every single time someone's going in there, hopefully they're having a good time, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's nice. You know, hopefully little, your map little doesn't make them like, rage quit the game forever then after that. Say that again? Hopefully like, once they play your map, they don't rage quit forever and they're just gone from the game. That's the goal. <laughs> that would be the goal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or they have good FPS. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Being being a content creator definitely has its ups and downs, but mostly mostly ups. Um, okay, so what, uh, Alec? What is your like number one memory as a content creator so far? When you think back at all Only the years one? you've been doing it. Oh, uh, I actually have two in mind, and they're both very different. Um, I think the one that meant the world to me um, was when I got. Um, I got a really amazing opportunity through one of my sponsors. They flew me to LA for a shoot, and I got to work with really huge creators and having the honor of being able to create content alongside them and, and be there and do what I love um, was to me just, it was surreal. And it meant that I was, to me, it meant that I was doing, I was on the right path about something that, for something that I had truly loved. Like I was doing the right thing and, and it, it reaffirmed my work. And um, to me that was so special and so memorable. And the second moment was uh, actually not too long ago, it was actually at TwitchCon when I had uh, 
she declared herself a lurker, but she came up to me and, and basically told me how much the stream meant to her and that she's never talked in my stream, but she watches it every single day. And, and it, was, it was that, like going, getting through the day and, and that, being able to hug that person and, and thank them you know, for, for being there. And, and it was just so, so special. And it's, I, I tried to hold my tears back because she was so sweet. And it just multiplying that, knowing that you do that, and there's many more people that haven't reached out to you to say those things, uh, makes those memories just extra special. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Big shout out to the lurkers on Twitch, by the way. Huh? <laughs> shout out to the lurkers on Twitch. We appreciate the people. People yes. that don't necessarily chat, but they want to hang out. So we know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, what do you think? Ooh, I think the first, the the probably the best one was the first time I went to actually see the like three four three studios. Because for me, for like before that, my entire life, like. God knows how many years, well over a decade, Halo had always been this like online thing. Like, I'd go into the real world and basically none of it would exist, right? Like, it exists when I'm at home on my like PC or Xbox, but I go into the real world, none of it exists, it's not there. And then I come to Seattle, go to 343, and I walk in and I see the Chief statue and the Atriox statue, and it's like, wait, this is actually real now? Like, so many years of like seeing this stuff in videos, online and stuff, and never actually experiencing it in real life, but then actually experiencing it in real life for the first time kind of like made it all seem even more real than it was. Um, that was a very, very, very fun memory. Yeah, I, I'll never forget the first time that I got to check out 343. Alex, what about you? Um, I think the craziest and the best experience was IGN. Like when IGN shared my stuff. Oh yeah. I'm sitting in my room, hanging out, and all of a sudden, um, I think it was Caleb messaged me. It's just a friend of mine. He's like, he shared just an image of it, and I was like, yeah, nice troll, dude. That's great, you know. <laughs> and then he's like, no, no, no. Here's the link. And I, I probably screamed like a little schoolgirl. I was like freaking out, dude. Yeah. That was, it was. Uh, that was a really big validation. Like you said, that you're on the right path. That you're going in a direction that um, is just flow. And I was, that's the core memory, I think, as of recently. Uh, but then also coming to this, I would say, is just my favorite because I'm meeting a lot of people I've always wanted to meet. Um, I'm doing a lot of things I've always wanted to do. So yeah. I think that would be the two. Yeah, so. uh, that's, that's awesome. Sure. I couldn't imagine like just waking up and being like, oh, wait, I've been covered by the, one of the biggest uh, publications in the world that's like have mentioned me. So that'd be surreal. I, I don't take it lightly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, very grateful for that. Yeah. So for me, uh, I have maybe two answers. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna be like Ali. Two, I have two answers. So, uh, number one, probably honestly, uh, becoming content creator for Space Station Gaming. Uh, they reached out to me just before Infinite came out, and I always loved the idea of being in an organization. Um, so whenever they reached out to me, I was like, this is a perfect fit. And ever since I've been, you know, part of them, I've had their team to cheer for, and I've really just felt like part of that little family. And it, it's been like such a gratifying thing because I think as a content creator getting to that kind of level is something that everyone wants to try and strive for so it really like has meant the world to me and I've been with them for over a year now and it has been the best experience my second experience that has like been my absolute favorite is uh, the BTB Bonanza that I got to be part of uh, earlier this year or maybe it was rally last year technically uh, anyway uh, being on the main stage, playing like big team battle, being surrounded by like the biggest names in Halo. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm playing my BTB game, doing my thing, helping a scorpion tank, destroying people. Uh, that is something that I will never, ever, ever forget. So being like, getting to be a part of these things that I myself grew up watching other content creators getting to do. And then, you know, after all the long, long days, the hard work, getting to be given those opportunities for myself is like awesome. Also, third answer, this panel is like now one of my favorite memories. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, uh, no, it's, it's super fun, super fun. Um, OK, so this is a really interesting question. Alex, you can start, OK? OK. If you didn't make the kind of content that you currently do, what would you do? And you can't say I'd be a builder in a different game. I want something totally uh, no. out there. I would probably be a photographer or a filmmaker. Oh, honestly. like for like as I, a content creator for like YouTube and stuff. No, like at, like um, because I went to school. I went to uh, Ringling College for a little bit for photography and film, but then I dropped it because I just 
life showed me other options and my passion shifted and whatever. But if I could go back to something, I think it would be that. Just because, um, similar to my friend down here that's taking photos, like, I love that you can, the, the composition of things and just how you can capture a story just in a single shot, very similar to what you do with Forge or creating scenes in Unreal or whatever. Um, that's what intrigues me about photography. And then filmmaking is just, like, I, I've always just loved it. When I was younger, I would make the crappiest like video recordings or just like whatever. I've always had a passion for that. I could see myself going into that later on in life, for sure. Oh, fair I, enough. I think that would be it. Yeah. Alec, what about you? Well, outside of content creation entirely, um, when I started creating content, I, was, I also had a full-time job as a, a performer. It was my first, my first job uh, in entertaining. It was... Uh, it was what changed my life, basically. Before that, I was uh, doing my first internship as an event production assistant, and I loved, you know, I was off stage, but I had this calling to just, I wanted to be on stage, I wanted to entertain. And um, I auditioned and I got the role full time, and that's when I started to do content creation on the side to do gaming and entertainment. Um, and if I didn't do this, I would most likely be uh, auditioning and doing acting, theater, or plays. Um, I feel like that's what I would be focusing. Content creation-wise, I think I would probably have an IRL backpack and I'd be traveling the world. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if it, had, it had nothing to do with Halo or content, uh, gaming, I would probably be doing that, traveling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Luke, what would you? Uh, well, completely outside of content creation, funnily enough, my answer is actually very similar. Um, for a while before YouTube, I wanted to be an actor as well. Um, in fact, the TV show that made me fight me like be like, yeah, I want to do this. It's True Detective. Uh, Matthew McConaughey's character in that was like, I was like, oh my god, I need to do this. Um, <laughs> but then, like, I feel like it's quite funny because we all mention something kind of entertainment-wise, and we all make content. So I think there's definitely an overlap there. Uh, and I, a lot of the stuff that you would do in acting, I think, goes into like streaming and, and YouTube as well. Um, but in terms of like actual like content, if I wasn't making Halo content. Uh, I used to make zombies videos way back in the day, and I, I every now and then I get nostalgic for that, and I go back and watch old videos, and I miss it. I think it's funny. My first ever video on YouTube was also a zombies really? video in World at War. Yes, so we have like similar beginnings. Firstly, good taste. Yes, and, uh, of course. Secondly, of course. yeah, very coincidental. <laughs> yeah, um, but also like I, I love the idea of like variety as well. Um, like I have so many games that I want to make a video about, like. Ah, there's so many. Battle for Middle Earth, shout out any Battle for Middle Earth fans out there, like <laughs> Tarkov, loads of other games like that that I also love alongside Halo. Um, I think variety would be one of the things that I would have, I would have gone for as well, but yeah. completely outside of content creation, acting as well. Uh, I, always, I always loved it. It's just, like you were saying, like being on a stage or something, and just like, it calls you. It, it, it calls on, you. Honestly, it does. Like, it's, it's weird to say, but it honestly does. That's the best way to describe it. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah, so my answer, I don't even know if I really have an answer, which is an issue, I guess. You know, I've been making Halo content for eight years, and I just, I couldn't even imagine not doing Halo. And when I do, I'm like, I draw a blank because I have no idea. Because going to school back, you know, a while ago, I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I never, like, I never had a, a proper job that I wanted to do. All I thought was YouTube, and then. I was a huge Halo fan, so I just, there was nothing else really, like a traditional job that I was really drawn to. So I got very lucky basically that YouTube and Halo and all that worked out for me because I really can't picture. I guess if I didn't do Halo, I would do more variety. I love scary games. Scary games are like my... Me too. I, I, something about them, like... If it makes my heart like pound a little bit, it's like even you know the scarier the better. No, I, you're not. You don't like that. No way. Uh, <laughs> you don't, no, like don't want to like do like a co-op scary game. I mean, I game. love watching the reactions of people like when they get scared. I love watching those videos, but I can't play them. Okay, this guy loves scary games, and he has somehow never played Resident Evil 4. Yeah, well, it's on my list. All right, everyone has a long. Everyone has like one of those like games that they need to play. That's on my long list That's of games. That's number one on your list. Yeah, yeah, so I'll play the remake or whatever, but <laughs> I, a scary, I, I think, honestly, if I could just focus on scary games and just do content like that, I'd be more than happy. I'd probably be like a really traumatized person, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that would be a lot of fun. Just because I feel like scary games bring out like, a, like an actual, real, authentic reaction out of people, and it's 
hilarious to me to watch someone get terrified. So, yeah, no, scary games are, are definitely my, my cup of tea. But outside of uh, YouTube and streaming, I used to be a climbing instructor for like two years. That was fun, I guess. Whole world, I guess? Yeah, so I don't know if I'd want to go back to that, but it was fun for the time it lasted, you know? Uh, it, it was a fun time. Okay, so if you have any advice, if you could go back to yourself when you started creating content, what advice would you give you? Be consistent. I think the biggest thing people kind of fail to do with any kind of content creation is like, they go in one direction. This, uh, this is something that I did so much at the start, most because I was too young to understand what to do. But it's like, they go in one direction, then all of a sudden they get like a new idea and then they completely pivot their content in another way. And then they do it again and again and again and again. And you don't build like a, a proper audience doing that because people like from one community come and watch you and then you leave that community and it's like, well, they're not gonna watch you anymore. So like, I feel like the best way to do it or rather a tip that I would have given my younger self is to just like, stay consistent, stick to one thing for a while, and then once you've got a base with that, then you can start to build out. Um, but don't try and build out before you've got a solid base, because that's, uh, I mean, obviously there are exceptions to a rule with that kind of stuff, right? But like a lot of the time, if you try and do that, then it's not gonna be successful. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of people, unfortunately, try and do everything at once. And if you try and do everything, it is extremely hard to get anywhere, so. You know, focus on like one thing you really enjoy and then slowly over time, if you want to expand, then, you know, kind of kind of start putting feelers right there and see what people think. Alex, what about you? I had someone many years ago that told me something that might sound very um, basic to you guys, but he said to focus on three C's all the time. And that is obviously first off being content, second being consistency, last being care. Um, content, you want to make sure that what you're doing is something you genuinely love. Because if you genuinely love it, then people that find your content will, will feel that through your content and they'll want to see more. I've seen people that make the mistake of doing things just to appease to an audience or to a trend or something that always falls flat. That's not a long term, um, that's not a healthy long term mindset to have. So doing something that you actually have a real interest in so that, that energy comes, comes across. Um, and make sure that it's, it's high quality, of course, but to always be challenging yourself and just pushing yourself forward. Um, secondly, being consistent, right? But it's not just being consistent in posting, it's being consistent in experimenting, constantly looking at what you're putting out, seeing if it's working or not, and constantly shifting and changing, if need be, to see what could work better in the future. Um, as well as, uh, like for me, with Forge or Unreal, or for any of you guys in anything that you do, um, consistency in, in upgrading your skill sets and, 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 and whatnot. All of this sounds obvious, but it's very easy to get into a, um, a space where you essentially are finding success and then you plateau. The only thing that's gonna get you out of there is consistently trying to just one-up yourself. And then lastly is care. It's just you wanna build a genuine connection with your audience because that's the only thing that creates a foundation that's strong enough to last long-term. You know, a lot of obvious things, but it's still important. I feel like those are things people could lose yeah. sight of. The thing know? is, a lot of it's obvious in hindsight, but when you're doing it for the first time, none of it's obvious. It's it, not obvious. Yeah. No, it's things that people can look past because when you're seeing numbers and numbers and numbers, right, or when you're not seeing numbers, uh, you just, it, you can either get lost in that, right, or you could totally just be um, uh, unmotivated and whatnot. But remembering those three things, if you do those three things long enough, you'll build a platform and you'll build an audience. Yeah, you know? for sure. Definitely Alec? a healthy balance of looking at numbers and not looking at numbers. Like you need a healthy balance of knowing when to do it, when not to do it, and when you do look at the numbers, what do they mean? Learning what they what they mean. I wanted to go after, uh, talk about consistency. Be being consistent schedule-wise is so important, especially when you're on Twitch. Like you need to set a you need to set a schedule and you need to stick to it. Especially That's something when you're that I struggle out. with, unfortunately. Huh? I'm, re I'm really bad about that myself. So I'm getting bad at about that myself right now. I need to fix my schedule. Um, one of the moments when I realized that I was sort of starting to be successful streaming was when I had a really consistent schedule. I would start my stream at 12:30 every single day. It was also the same a game. I was playing lots of Warframe and the community knew where to find me. They knew exactly when, they knew where, what directory to find me, and they were always there. And it worked really well for me, so consistency is definitely something that you want to be having in your content. Um, a lot of questions, uh, one of the main questions that I get uh, are how, 
are about should I do it? Should I start content creation? And for those people, I say use the tools that you already have to start streaming and don't wait. Don't spend money to test to see if you like it or not. Um, content creation is something that you might not like. If you lo love playing video games, sometimes it takes away the joy of playing video games because you are now, one, making it your job, but you're also splitting your attention, especially when you're streaming. You're not 100% paying attention to the game. You are talking to chat. You're thinking about other things that you're going to be doing in the next five minutes. You're, you're trying to shoot when you're in Halo. You're, it's, it doesn't, you're not 100% focused. So definitely you need to just use the equipment that you have to start trying it out to see if you like it. And don't be afraid to do it. Um, I, when I was in my production assistant uh, internship, my manager, uh, um, I explained to her in one of our one-on-ones um, that I was feeling this pull for acting and I wanted to audition and I wanted her input because she was herself a theater major and she basically told me that I wouldn't be able to do it. She said that I, I, it, it wasn't going to be there for me and that I should stick to being a, a production assistant, which I loved, um, but I didn't listen. And when the inter internship ended, I started auditioning and I got the role and that's why I'm a content creator because I decided to not listen to the people who didn't believe in me and I followed my instinct to be able to get to where I am. Following your instinct and that true north to do the things that you love I think is so important, especially if you're doing something like this. Funnily enough, I had a very similar kind of thing. I was told in a school that what I was doing was a complete waste of time, wouldn't go anywhere, uh, to just stop doing it and focus on like conventional stuff and I didn't. <laughs> I didn't, that, that for me was like, I remember hearing that and I was like, right, I'm going to grind like 10 times harder now, now that I've heard that, because I'm not doing that. Like, I want to make this a thing that works. So like, sometimes that can be like quite inspirational when someone says that you can't do something, it's like, right, I've got to prove them wrong. You're like, you, you don't believe in me? Yeah. Well, uh, I'll show you. Yeah, I'm what feeling I very do. inspired right now by, by y'all yeah. so. <laughs> but, but it's But it's interesting, because when you get that backlash and that pushback, Sometimes it's just straight negativity from people, but it's also from people that do it out of love for you, right? Because they, they're, they're scared that it won't pan out. Yeah. And those people oftentimes, because of the fact that they're so close to you, are the ones that are most successful of talking you out of doing whatever it is that you want to do, you know? So you got to look out for that as well. It's family, it's friends, it's all of that. You've got to trust your instinct, just go for it. Do it long enough and you, you'll, I mean, it'll be clear, you know? So. It's you'll feel it and you'll, you'll feel it. You know yeah, when it's it, when you're passionate about something, it's like a fire you have inside you. Yeah. You but know you love this. Yeah. It's most importantly when things line up just with ease, that's how you know you're on a path that is right for you. When you're encountering a bunch of hesitation and you know, roadblocks and whatnot, it's usually an indicator to course correct. So I, I actually have nothing to add because all of you covered everything that I would have thought. I guess one extra thing, never compare yourself to other people. I think uh, jealousy is such a, a toxic feeling to have within content creation because say you make a video, does bad, your buddy makes a video, theirs does great and you feel bad or even jealous towards them, it'll just lead you down a really horrible path that, you know, Back in the early days of me making content, I would do that all the time and I would, I would hate it. So growing out of that was the best thing I ever did. Now I just become happy and, you know, cheer on your friends when they do well because you'll catch up eventually. So it's the best way to be. Anyway, so we're now going to move on to a Q&A section. So we're going to pick three questions from the audience. Uh, the way we're going to do it is uh, raise your hand if you have a pressing question. Uh, there's definitely people I won't be picking, but <laughs> <laughs> but if uh, three of you, if you don't raise your hand, if you have a good question, I'll pick three people from the audience and uh, you can ask your question. Do we have anyone that wants to ask a question? Okay. All right, Mr. I Spiteful, you have a question. Uh, do we have a microphone? Oh goodness. What's your, what is your favorite video uh, that you've ever made on YouTube? Favorite video I've ever made on YouTube? That's a good question, actually. A um, couple years ago, I came out with a Halo montage called Turbulent. That by far, my favorite video I've ever put out, just because so much time and so much work went into it by me and my friend. And uh, I look back on that video, and I just have so many good memories attached to it, because just so much time and effort was put into it. Look. I have quite a few. Um 
Honestly, we were talking about it in the lore panel earlier, but my reaction video to the Infinite Legendary ending, I still go back and rewatch that because I'm like, oh man, that was so good. I love my making that. It was, <laughs> hey, there we go. Yeah, it was so fun. I love making that. But then also like some of the like lore deeper dives that I've done, like connecting dots between like different games and things in the universe or is really fun. So I love doing like deep dives into like lore like that. Um, and then also some of my like, different videos, like I made a Metal Gear Rising uh, video a few months ago and that was so fun to make. Same with like, a, I made a Resident Evil 4 video as well. Um, a very different kind of content, but it was uh, nice to like spread my creative wings, so to speak. Um, but for Halo, it's definitely the reaction video and also the deeper lore stuff for sure. I think um, I'm mainly a Twitch streamer, but I do YouTube sometimes. And um, one of my favorite videos this year was, uh, as actually, was it this? It's almost been a year since that video. It was uh, as soon as Halo Infinite came out, one of the first things I really wanted to do was to bring the community together. And I wanted to play those custom games. And uh, I decided to do the Duck Hunt video. Um, so. The reason why it's so why, why, to, why to me it's one of my favorites is because I we were able to bring the entire community together to to have fun and play Halo like the good old days, and and turn that into a highlight video and see how much Halo means to everybody and just just bringing the 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 you know the feels of, of Halo. So to me that's one of my favorite videos that I've I've ever done. It just brought back nostalgia from years ago. Okay. My favorite video would have to be because of these two right here. It was the Zeta Halo level that I did. The first one that I ever did, um, Uber Nick started the video saying, oh my God, I'm gonna cry. And that was fantastic. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Um, it was like the scenic views and the beautiful Halo music. And he's just like, and I loved it. Uh, and then um, Hidden Xperia was like, wow, what's that thing out in the distance? Like they're just, their reactions were awesome. And it made all the work that went into that really worth it and fun and um, yeah I just I was laughing really hard at those two so I think that's my favorite as of recently yes nice. nice. okay we have another one hmm. Hmm. don't Question. pick that guy no, I'm just wanna... kidding. <laughs> What's up, guys? Uh, kind of surprised not to hear you guys talk about this, but how important, or well, obviously networking is kind of important, uh, just like in anything else, but how do you guys, in today's day and age, where it's so like saturated, how do you guys recommend going about networking? Obviously, I don't want to go spamming people and stuff, right? Can you repeat it one more time? We have like this stage over there, so it's really long. We have the main stage line. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so networking, like it's important, right? Um, I'm surprised. I didn't really hear much about it in this panel, but how do you, in today's day and age where everything's so saturated, how do you guys go think about going about networking is the best way to go about it? Luke, do you want to take this one? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, content creation nowadays, like it's simultaneously really saturated, but also like there's new niches opening up all the time that you can like dive into and like, and fill. Um, I think honestly, like my best advice for that is the same advice that I gave for uh, like when I was coming up with like video ideas, I just, go for a walk, like go get some fresh air, like free my mind and then they kind of come to me. And it's the same kind of thing with that. Like, even though like, I, I remember thinking like maybe like eight years ago, like, oh, there's too many YouTubers now. There's like no room for any new ones, but there's, there's always new ones coming out of the woodwork that are getting big like out of nowhere. So there's, there's always room for more people. Um, I feel like that's the thing with the industry. It's like, it's, it is literally, put intended, infinite. Uh, it's, it can keep growing indefinitely. So I think, um, Regardless of how saturated it is, there's always going to be a niche that you can fill. Uh, you just have to find it. And obviously, the more saturated it gets, the harder it is to find that niche. But it's definitely out there. Yeah. Uh, we have time for one more really quick question. I wanted to add something about networking. Josiah? <laughs> yeah. I guess they're not going to do that. Um, so I think it's fairly important that you believe in yourself when it comes to these sort of uh, these sort of things. Um, but I'm just curious if at least one person, who in your life do you believe believed in you the most when starting out, or at least when you revealed this sort of thing to your friends and family? Because when I first started, at first, 
it, it took a little while for me to kind of reveal it to the people around me because you're worried that like you know are they going to tell me that I should give up on this so they can tell me to keep going and you know support that you're always worried about what their reaction is going to be so for each of you who do you think supported you the most and I guess kind of like you know let these people let, let, let these people know who you appreciated the most it's a good question uh, let's try and be quick fire with this but my parents, uh, my friends and family, uh, my parents always never knew what YouTube was, but they were like, if it makes you happy, go for it. Uh, making YouTube videos requires a lot of time, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of social time you don't get to spend with your friends. My friends always understood that it was important to me. So I don't, without their support, I, I don't think I would have been able to like make it as far as I have because if you don't have that support structure, it would be so much more difficult. Yeah, I mean, for me, definitely my mom. Uh, because she supported me from like day one when I had like zero subscribers, was making random Halo 3 videos. Uh, and then also one of my friends back home, uh, Isaac, who I used to make Call of Duty videos with like 12 years ago, uh, we, we like kind of at the start made videos together and that kind of got the ball rolling quite a bit because that was when my channel just got made. Uh, so yeah, those are probably the two, uh, m m mostly though, because she, she had no idea what I was doing at the start. I was like 12 years old and I was sat in my room recording myself playing Halo 3 and she was like, why are you doing that? You can make money from yeah. making <laughs> videos? I will never forget when I got my first check from Google for 71 pence, <laughs> um, which in the US is about 75 cents. I, like, they sent me a check in the mail for it. I was like, look, mom, I can make money from this. <laughs> 75 cents. I think I've been really lucky to have been surrounded by people that people that love me that do support what I do. Um, I think my, <laughs> the reason I play Halo is because of my mom, by the way, I think she's watching. Hi, mom. Um, <laughs> she was the one that bought me Halo and she was, she started playing Halo herself. And uh, so she knew what I, she understands what it is I'm doing in a certain way. Um, but I think it's easier for my parents to, to accept what I do because I already got my degree and I can do whatever I want in my life. Um, so after I did get that first full-time job, they were like, okay, this makes sense. We're gonna support you. And, and people that have been surrounded by, that I've been surrounded by have always supported me and listened to me. So I feel like I've been very lucky to, to have that support system. Um, but if you don't have that support system, you always have to believe in yourself and keep trying. Um, there will always be people that will not be believe in you and you can only believe in yourself and you yourself know what you can do. That's very true. Um, so obviously my, my, my parents were a big part of me just exploring, always experimenting and just going out there and trying new things. But I would say it's my brother. I, I, I hope you're watching. Um, <laughs> he is the one person that has always just been like, you want to do this? Go do this. You want to do this? Go do that. I, I have no idea how to set up a PC, so none of this Unreal or Forge stuff would even be possible without my brother, because I would have probably burned the house down. But like, you know, the <laughs> thing is, he has been incredibly influential in my life. He's a younger brother. I love him to death. And um, yeah, I'm grateful for you, man. You, you know, he, he's the one that really pushed me to, to do it. So yeah, Very wholesome. my brother. <laughs> all right, uh, I think that's it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed our little panel talking about content creation. So yeah, I appreciate it. Cheers.